Congressman, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to start with 9-11. What would you like to say to your constituents in terms of reflection on that day? And, and also, have there been lessons learned and lessons lost? Are, are we safer, less safe? You know, uh, what I would say is, first of all, my, my heart and my prayers go out to the families of the victims. I've met them here in Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, we need to do everything we can to prevent another 9-11. And for me, that sent me on a personal mission to get the 28 pages that were classified in the 9-11 Commission report released. And those were actually released this summer. Uh, it actually it happened the same day that Trump announced his vice presidential nominee, but I would encourage folks to go read those 28 pages that have been kept secret from the American public and, um, and look at and think about what actually caused 9-11. What we found out in those 28 pages is that Saudi spies, not people from Saudi Arabia, but Saudi spies enabled the hijackers to complete their mission. And, and knowing what we know now, are we more safe or less safe? I, I think Americans feel less safe with ISIS, I have to say. Well, the world's still a volatile place, and I'm an advocate for not making it more volatile. You know, I've sponsored resolutions to keep us from shipping arms to Syria, to stop us from intervening in a, in a war in Syria. And most recently, uh, I sent a letter urging our leadership and the president not to complete a sale of arms to Saudi Arabia. And I, I want to talk, a I mean, it seems like every time we talk, we talk about the heroin epidemic and it's, it's not getting better. It's, it, recently yeah. we had a rash of overdoses in the tri-state area. Again, what can Congress do to stem the tide of this madness? This, you know, this is a big problem in our district and it, it started out in the Cincinnati area, but it has spread even into the more rural areas now. So one of the things that I've looked at in my role on the Oversight Committee is how is the war on heroin going in Afghanistan? You know, they make 90% of the world's opium from which heroin is derived, and they have doubled their production. Even though we've spent $8 billion in Afghanistan on the war on drugs over there, and the Inspector General has told us that it's been virtually wasted. What I'm advocating for is to take the $8 billion that you know, well, we've wasted $8 billion, but presumably we're going to spend another $8 billion. Take that money instead of sending it to Afghanistan. Try and interdict the heroin as it comes into this country because, you know, poppy's not grown here. This is not a, a drug native to this country. It all comes across the border. And I think we should stop fighting the war that's not working and start trying to do something that would work. And, and immediately, short term, people overdose they get narcan or something to you know literally bring them back from the edge of death they're sent home in many cases so what should be done should they be immediately sent to jail or should they be immediately sent to rehab or something else yeah this is not a, a crime problem in my opinion of course you you do have criminals at the top but most of the people in this war on heroin are, are victims and, uh, you know, I served as a county judge executive in a, in a county in our district. And there I learned that we have so many people locked up that really aren't criminals. What they need is help, not incarceration. In fact, we're going to be talking about criminal justice reform here in Congress probably in these next three or four weeks. In fact, I've got a, a meeting today on that with the, with the majority whip. But, but rehab is very expensive. How can we get the resources out to more people so they can go through rehab? Well, you know, there's a debate about whether rehab should be funded at the federal level or the state level. And I, I come down on the state level. This is, again, like with Obamacare, conservatives are upset that uh, the federal government is trying to micromanage health care, and I consider that aspect of our effort to combat heroin, that is a state aspect. We shouldn't have the federal government dictating to the states what kind of rehab there needs to be and what kind of health care should be provided. The House is in session about, what, eight more weeks before the end of the year? So in that amount of time, can anything truly get done in terms of taking care of financial business and also maybe even the, the spread of the Zika virus, which is being talked about today in Congress? 
Well, you know, there are about eight more weeks for Congress to meet, four of them before the election and four of them after the election. I'm an advocate for getting our work done before the election. Sometimes it feels like Groundhog Day here in Congress. For the last three years, we have kicked the can into the lame duck session, in other words, into December, and then done a giant omnibus that has unrelated legislation to the spending uh, tucked in there, and it gets passed within two days. We're trying to break that cycle. There are some of us here in Congress that say, either get the appropriations bills done before the lame duck session, or if we do a continuing resolution, instead of putting that in the lame duck session where Obama will be working with congressmen that are no longer even elected, put the CR so that the funding uh, discussion happens with the new president and the new Congress, people who are accountable to the taxpayers and the voters. So we're trying to break the cycle of addiction, if you will, that Congress has and get rid of the lame duck session and do responsible work in the light of day. This doesn't mean a shutdown. We're, we're all for funding the government. In fact, we want to fund the government not in a CR that only lasts three months, but in one that lasts six months to the next presidency. Okay, so you're talking about four weeks before the election. Can that be done? Well, it absolutely can be done. I mean, I feel like these four weeks that we're spending here, we're, we're sort of idling, honestly. We could be doing more. It's not an aggressive pace. The, our leadership wants to get Zika done. I absolutely you know, want to get that passed. We've already passed it in the House. The Senate needs to do something. Or maybe the Senate and the House need to get back together. But we have Zika and we have a continuing resolution to do. Honestly, those shouldn't take more than a week or two, which leaves a, a lot of time left. So uh, it's not, <laughs> there's no lack of activity here in Congress. There's a lack of progress. Yeah, and I guess I should have phrased it differently. Instead of saying, can it be done? Because it could be done, like you said, in two weeks. Do you think it will yeah. be done? Right. Well, you know, uh, people have asked me, how is Paul Ryan doing? and I'll grade him on these next four weeks and on the lame duck session. If he ends up, you know, he's a better speaker, he's a better spokesman uh, for Republicans, but if we end up with the same results, if we end up with an omnibus, with things tucked into it in the dark of night in December, then really we've gotten no better results. So can it be done? Yes. Will it be done? I don't know. I don't want to pre, I don't want to handicap that. Uh, we'll see. Getting back to security issues again, you support Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. Why do you think he would make the nation safer than if Hillary Clinton were elected president? Well, you know, I serve on the Oversight Committee, as I've said before, and in there we've covered the issue of Hillary's emails. The director of the FBI basically told us that Hillary shouldn't be prosecuted because she is so unsophisticated and so careless that all of the secrets that she put in danger, uh, when she did that, she had no intent. It was basically incompetence. I, I shudder at the thought that somebody that's so unsophisticated that they don't recognize when they're reading classified emails and sending classified emails or putting uh, the nation's secrets at risk, that that person would be in the White House. I mean, that's one reason that I think uh, we'd be safer with Donald Trump. What about the argument, though, that she has experience being in the Situation Room? She has a measured temperament, at least from all accounts, uh, outwardly. She seems to, to not lash out as much. That that controlled, measured kind of personality would actually be good for someone in that position. You know, uh, again, uh, from my seat on the Oversight Committee, I've sat through the Benghazi hearings. And her experience in Libya, frankly, terrifies me to put her in control of all of our foreign policy. That was a, uh, a very mismanaged situation, not just the, the crisis that happened in Benghazi at our consulate, but leading up to that, the whole war in Libya. We need less of that. And I think what's ironic here in this election is people realize that Hillary is, although she's a Democrat, she's actually the pro-war candidate. And Donald Trump, although he's a Republican, he's probably less likely to engage us overseas in a conflict like you saw in Libya, like we've seen uh, ongoing in Iraq, and likes going on in Syria. As we head into the election season uh, after Labor Day, it is really heating up now. What do you want voters to keep in mind as they go to the voting booth? What do you think the, should be the primary issues they think about? 
Well, you know, we've got to think about the economy, but there are all these weapons of mass distraction, is what I call them. They're important issues, but they consume a disproportionate amount of the news cycle. I want them to think about our children's future and about the astronomical federal debt that we've got and which candidates are serious about addressing that. And I'm not talking about Republican versus Democrat. When you decide to vote, vote for the person and who is going to be fiscally responsible with our children's future. All right. They're telling me we're out of time, and I thank you for joining us this afternoon. All right, Paul.